Kwan Yin is um, self-love, compassion, and perseverance. Because I think people forget that you know she's not she's not just love and light and love. she's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> she's a badass. Um, you know, Hecate is um, magnetism, power, and magic. Lilith is sexuality, healing, and freedom. And then Thoth is soul wisdom, balance, and discipline. This is Molly Sky Brown. Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Frank with me, your host. And today I have a very special guest with me. She's actually one of my assistants that I pay very good money to make her make little tidbits of this here podcast. And she does such a good job that I've invited her to come on the show and talk about all the other things she also does, which is uh, she is known as the joy goddess. This is Mallory Kirsten. Uh, and because she's dedicated to inspiring others to live in their joy and rediscover the magic of their lives. It is rediscovery because the magic of your life has always been there, whether you realize it or not. She's an Akashic Records reader, a teacher, writer, clairvoyant, and channel. She is committed to helping women access, align with, and live their joy and purpose. Her classes, courses, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and creative works are designed to help you rediscover, remember, and realize your true purpose. That is quite a gift. <laughs> Thanks. So this is Mallory. Mallory, tell me how you fell into this. Tell me a little bit of your backstory, if you can give us a little bit. I know that's an open Pandora's <laughs> box question. 100%. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that I think is just really important to note is that there's so many multi-passionate people out there. And it's because those multi-passionate people have lived so many different past lives, right? And so in this life, everything is trying to trickle down and integrate into the soul. I mean, it's already integrated in your soul, but into this body, into this iteration of your life now. And so I constantly get people coming to me and I, I, and I was like this too, because we're fed this lie essentially that, says you have to focus on one thing if you want to be any good at it right. and that was not my experience growing up like you can see the different phases of my life where you know so elementary school was gymnastics and ballet um until I hit puberty and I hit puberty at like age nine so I became a little lost it was like my first identity crisis of like who am I if I'm not the gymnast and the ballerina um because you can tell your body looks different in a leotard than the other girls and so I was like you know what I'm not comfortable with this so I stopped that so then in middle school my identity was very much around band and music and then I also did theater and then there was this ill-fated uh season of volleyball <laughs> that I played in the eighth grade they were okay and, I, and this is not a diss at me they literally were desperate because they had a sixth and seventh grade team like that was one team and then they had an eighth grade team that was only eighth graders and they just they had half the team filled and they really needed people and that was literally how it was presented to me and I was like well I like the teacher who's the coach so I guess I'm gonna play volleyball for a season <laughs> that is too funny you and I have so far very very similar lives just replace softball with volleyball in the exact same scenario they needed like one more person <laughs> I was like oh darn it I've really put uh, a lot of um interest out there that was not real yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I stuck with it I stayed but yeah same thing I developed very early and left gymnastics kind of similarly I felt very uncomfortable with my new my new skin and then kind of fell into music and felt a little more fun with theater and expression through music and then yeah tell me tell me more so far we're the same person <laughs> yeah I know right <laughs> so when I'm watching your podcast and I'm repurposing your podcast I'm sitting there nodding along like that yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. You so do by such a good job at it too. And thank God. Every morning I read it, and I'm like, thank God for Mallory. My husband's like, yeah, she's freaking nailing it. <laughs> it wouldn't exist otherwise. 
Um, so then by high school, I settled solely into I was the band geek. And that's what I did for four years. I literally, I and the, you know, and I took as many advanced classes as I possibly could because that was what you were supposed to do. Yeah, um, but I would practice somewhere. anywhere from, you know, if I didn't have actual, I played trumpet. Okay. Okay. I have to visualize. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. I still have an my angel trumpet. with a trumpet. Go on. Aww. <laughs> Um, so I, I was rigorously disciplined in that because I still was in this idea of, I, and I had this idea in my head that I lost time because I hadn't focused on this, in this instrument my entire life. And so I needed to focus on it now. So if I didn't have a band practice, which marching band season, it was literally like five to nine on at night on Tuesdays, and then it would go like nine to nine on Saturdays. So it's like, if it wasn't one of those days, I would be, so even the days that we had a two hour practice, we would have a day a week that we had a sh short practice. So three days a week, I was going home and I was practicing an hour and a half to three hours every you single night. Up, right. Right. Exactly. Well, feeling the same like way I when I picked up the clarinet, I, I felt super behind and yeah, it, it was very, very similar experience. Yeah, uh, because again, we're just fed all of these lies and right. we buy it as truth because it, they're adults that are telling us and the adults it's obviously true. know better. I know, I know, I know. And, and that's the biggest part of it is all this programming and all fitting us all into this one mold. It, it's <laughs> rejecting that. What and does, I'm a um, manifester in human design. I, I am that's not exactly what I was going to ask you. What was your, <laughs> what's your human design? I was never meant to fit the mold. I was always meant to lead. Right. Um, so, which is pretty multitasking of a thing and multifaceted and super, <laughs> not a niche interest, <laughs> but a whole bunch of interests. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a manifesting generator, which is still within the same kind of vein, a little bit more of a generator. Right. As far as your energy and your ability to sustain energy, but it's like, there is that manifester part of you that you inform you know, your strategy is partially to inform and to let people know, like, I'm doing this thing and then you can go do the thing. Yeah. Usually yeah. in response yeah. to something else, because that's the generator. Yes. Yeah. I feel like a gen manifesting generator is almost like a micromanager of a generator. Like, an, um, the like I manage a bunch of different projects and keep connecting things. And I have a lot of energy for that task as opposed to one focused task. That's kind of what it feels like for me. Uh, I, I'm so fascinated with all the human design stuff coming out. I think it's so Me incredible too. that we have this new kind of information coming out and very specific information mm -hmm. that's also spread because everyone used to be, how come you don't manifest the same way everyone else does? And it's like, oh gosh, there are so many variables as to why someone is having trouble manifesting. And now to understand that there's different types of manifestors, but also trauma has a significant, um, effect on your abilities to manifest what you're trying to actually manifest. So I'm loving all this new information coming out in the in the description, I will put a link of how you as the audience can look up what your human design chart is if you have no idea what we're talking about. But I've talked about this in a couple of episodes, very little. So I'm loving that we're talking about it once again, but that's not even your specialty. Your specialty is more the Akashic records, which we'll dive into in a minute, which is that's a oh, we'll get really cool skill set. <laughs> Um, and, and, and just because human design came up, it's like, I did not understand. I think if I had an understanding of my human design, I certainly would not have committed to as many extracurriculars as I did. I was going, 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 going. I was, you know, and in general, we're all conditioned to be pure generators where we just go, 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 where energizer body is go, 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 go. And I would get sick so much. And, you know, in high school, I, we didn't realize it was depression and depression comes from a continued, you know, there's obviously the brain, the, the brain chemistry thing, and I'm not downplaying that at all. But in my case, it was, I was constantly being stimulated and my body just could not go anymore. So like, um, I was on attendance probation my senior year of high school because I was attending school so little because I was so tired. And I had one very similar Epstein Barr. They I ended up diagnosed with that, but yeah, chronic, just chronic fatigue, but disguised as yeah, totally depression and overexertion. And the overexertion was me trying to fit a mold 
to feel accepted and appreciated and loved exactly. and respected and uh, you know just uncondi- you're you're seeking for unconditional love and we're running ourselves ragged in the yeah. process yeah exact yeah. same thing exact same thing and i had the same thing i had attendance issues even though i was a straight a student in an honors mm-hmm. and ap courses and when you are all of those things people don't think there's anything wrong you know, it took forever. It took years for them to be like, oh, you have depression. I'm like, oh, really? But it took me literally running my car into a wall to the point that the airbags de- deployed. Um, it wasn't fast enough to actually hurt me. You really did. Which hit a was, wall. I hit a literal wall. Oh my gosh, honey. Um, and, but that was in college after I had gone through another phase. <laughs> like, so it's oh like God. I dedicated myself to, you know, instrument. And then I moved into voice. You know, I had kind of started taking lessons in high school, um, voice lessons. And I was like, oh, I know I have an okay voice, but it wasn't, I was doing it to train my ears so that I could be a better trumpet player. You know, I was Ooh, doing everything smart. that I did was about being better at my instrument. And then I, I got tired of trumpet. I moved into singing for a few years, which turned into musical theater, which right. I know you know everything about. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's why it was my outlet too. And I can see why it was yours. It's such a beautiful outlet. It truly, truly is. Totally. Um, but that, and then that was all happening kind of at the same time that I had chosen, chosen my career, which I was, I was going to be a journalist. So I moved into this space so of, similar. I know where I was just writing all the time. I, you know, was doing so much volunteer work with different organizations that had newsletters. I got an internship at a paper. Um, I was taking journalism classes at the university and I became the production manager of the university newspaper. And then shit just hit the fan and my car hit the wall, you know? Oh. It was just, it was too much. And then it, but it took that drastic of a thing for, uh, cause I was seeing counselors, you know, off and on through all of those years, high school through college until it was like, Hey, there's a problem. And, yeah, and then the counselors agreed, trying. Oh, <laughs> there, there is a problem, <laughs> you know, but it's like, because I could have a conversation like this where I'm smiling and I seem happy and I seem, you know, whatever. And then um, I'm achieving. And then I that's really what tricks the radar. people. Yeah, that's what tricks people into thinking that we're okay. If we do well enough academically, if we do well enough in our extracurriculars, if we're doing, doing well and achieving, what possibly could we have to be depressed about? And what's so funny is the and, whole time, whenever the depression and all that came up for me uh, and, and, like I really noticed that I was struggling. I was shocked other people couldn't see that I was struggling. And when I finally like begged my family to please let me go in uh, impatient to really get a reprieve and um, sort some things out. I remember they were floored. Like they didn't Settle. believe I had depression. They were like, you know, you don't have, you, what, what did they, my dad said something like, you don't get headaches, we give them. Like you don't get anxiety, you give it. And I was like, dude, regardless of who's giving or getting, I have it. <laughs> and it was such a shameful thing within my family and no one believed it or, or really saw it, I guess, because I put on such a show. I put on such, and I wasn't realizing I was putting on an act. I was always trying to overcorrect what other people were missing and not ever telling me, Molly, take a break, Molly, relax. I mean, especially in my house, I don't know if you had the similar kind of upbringing, but we weren't allowed to lay around. It was, if you're laying around, I'll find something for you to do. If you're bored, I'll give you a chore, was right. my, was my like, family's can thing. Work for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> because from boredom becomes creativity. We yeah. need that. We need yeah. boredom in our lives because that opens up the space for our brains to create. We create a stimuli in ourselves or we create something in our imagination that stimulates us out of that boredom. We need that. That's where our artists live. Or the, yeah. So agree. Yeah. Um, but I, instead, we're just keep we're getting thrown new things and told to try new things instead of just be still. And yeah, I mean, and that's the generation that we are coming out of some of those kind of parents that were programmed that you can't just lay around or chill as a child. 
constantly have to be going, 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 stimulating. And then, yeah, we exhaust ourselves and then we don't recognize when depression hits because we're like, that's not a thing <laughs> or someone would have warned me. So what did you do then? So you ran into a brick wall and then that was like your shakeup moment for you. Um, I wish I could say that it was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it was, and it wasn't. Yeah. So it was in the sense that I realized I needed to change a pace. I needed a change of scenery. I took a semester off school, um, you know, and I did end up, there were classes that I withdrew from. And then there were others that I said, no, I'll take the F right now because I want to complete these classes. And so one of them was oh a gosh, history, literally the same. One of them was history of American theater. Duh. Oh. Of course, I'm going to complete that class. And then the other one was a screenwriting class and I wanted that experience I wanted that writing experience and everything else that I was just like hey you know what I don't care yeah. um I don't care about English literature before 1800 yes. <laughs> so. same I did the exact same thing I ended up getting cat scratch fever uh ran I mean same as like running into a brick wall it was I picked up my roommate's cat and it just happened to touch a lymph node and I got sick as shit for seven months, they um, the campus had never even seen a case of it. So it took three months for them to even diagnosis. And it was just hardcore chronic fatigue. I was in super pain. My lymph nodes swelled to Frankenstein level. And I was embarrassed and nervous. And then I had to withdraw from school, but it was the same thing. It was the, it was the universe hitting me, hitting a, a brick wall. And it detoxed my whole lymph system. Uh, but it was, yeah, seven months and I, I had to take time off of school and I flunked a bunch of classes that I was not interested in. Exact same thing, Mallory. I swear to God, we are slightly clony and I'm really interested in this. I find it fascinating <laughs> that we have lived the same life and now we're interviewing each other and we're like, hmm. no, I could have right? just said my own childhood and you could have said ditto. <laughs> well, not all of that, not all of it. But yeah. So, it's so I mean, but there's definitely you know there's definitely similarities i think you know what i perceive as one of our biggest differences is i you know you've said it before in other episodes of your podcast because i'm watching your how podcasts. do you know <laughs> <laughs> um you know in not so many words that part of what your purpose is here and part of what you're doing and the work that you're doing is mm -hmm. you are telling your story of trauma yeah to impact people into being able to vocalize theirs yeah. and to put an end to abusers abusing essentially. And so, I mean, I have I similar doing a variation stories. Of it. Most light workers are doing a variation of the same thing. Right, right. So my perspective is just a little bit more, more purposey, getting right. people into their purpose so that they can experience the joy in their lives. Because we are purpose led beings. We are purposeful beings on this planet every single one of us has a role that we're playing here and when we know what it is whether it's our nine to five job or not most for most people it's not their nine to five job but they are finding other ways there's other things that they're that they're doing that is fulfilling that role on the on the on the world and i think that's a huge misconception is that if i'm in my purpose then that's what i'm doing from nine to five every day right. and the two are very separate things there's purpose and then there's purpose work and you could be doing your purpose work regardless of how you're making your money. Explain more to that. And tell me more about that for people who really don't understand what that is. So let's, uh, what, what's your typical client that comes to you? Is it someone who's kind of got a grasp on the spiritual stuff or are they complete and utter newbies? Um, they're usually I get people who are a little bit newer to new to the woo. Um, but they have an idea that they feel like there's more to life, but they're not quite sure what they need a little bit of guidance and they're pretty sure they're not in their purpose work, but they're not sure what it is. And, yeah. you know, so there's a little bit of, there's just this, the, a little bit of uncertainty, but, yeah. um, they tend to have a little bit of knowledge of, you know, kind of the woo stuff, but usually people come to me because they are having their spiritual gifts wake up and they're not sure how to deal. Um, and they're figuring out how to align it with whatever their purpose is. Yeah. And so that's really where the Akashic records comes in. So yeah. I, like you was raised Catholic yeah. and I almost feel like Catholicism, Catholicism, Catholicism is the gateway drug to 
all things <laughs> gods and gods and goddesses. Totally. It's like, well, it's pagan it's like rooted. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I because I remember, like you know, in sixth grade, we study ancient civilizations yeah, and so yeah. i remember going like i wish i was greek mom she's like why why are you proud to be portuguese and she goes yeah and i go well because they have you know the goddess of such and such you know whatever it was that i was interested in at the time and right. she goes well we kind of have that we have the saints of blah 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 and i said oh i never thought of it that way right so really catholicism was the gateway for me to actually first of all um worship any sort of goddess figure because my first goddess figure was mother mary that right. i worshiped because when my body started changing that was that was so traumatic like i yeah. mean i have uh, especially at that not, age yeah so i'm not for me like i don't feel the need to speak out my trauma all the time yeah. i feel that like just for me i you know, I can gloss over it a little bit just to get the point across, but like, sure. I do have trauma from seven years old, um, sexual trauma from seven years old. Oh, and so it's like, on top of that, my body started to change this all. And then we moved. So it was all in this really uh, tiny period of time. All we of these the things were life. happening. <laughs> <I know. laughs> no wonder we, we were like, Ooh, magnetized well, you know i came other, for right? you first i came for you through back i was like is mallory busy i got some shit i need that shit to do because <laughs> it was like a year before you started doing anything for me because i was getting the hit i was like i see this chick and i working together and i love more and more i get to know about you and i had so much fun interviewing your woman bath are you guys legit married no but i have a ring <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. I mean, is that what you guys are, you know, playing house as? <laughs> Basically. I love that you're committed L to living it. in living in sin, all that. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> no, you are totally not. You are absolutely not. You're living in love. We are. And that's one we of the re are. that's one of the biggest reasons is me just a complete uh, hetero. I mean, even after all the abuse, I, I actually toyed with should I be with a woman because it felt maybe safer, but it just was not there for me. I even tried. But one of the reasons in before I even tried that in college, like I totally tried right. that. But before I even tried that, I walked away from the church because I was like, this is this is harsh. This is rough. I don't believe that I don't believe in the slightest that God has a problem with true, true love between consenting adults, regardless of sex. Like it made absolutely no sense to me. Everyone here has to procreate, then there's, where's the free will? <laughs> Give me a break. Everyone has to have babies, huh? Sounds like someone's enslaved us and is making us procreate. And it's not God. <laughs> yeah, and what's crazy about it is that I had a few people come out to me during my whole like middle school and high school years. I didn't think anything of it. I never me thought me for the second. for them. But when I came out, it was a completely different story. So when I was about nine years old and my body had started changing, I literally, sorry, Jesus, sorry, God. I literally was like, fuck you both. Same. <laughs> you, neither of you can understand what is happening to me right now. And I exactly prayed and we have the rosary. It's in honor of mother Mary. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. see anything. I, you know, I didn't see it any differently than praying to the two of them. I just had this other option. Yeah. And I so had that I connection with always... Mary Magdalene. Oh, okay. That's cool. basically who I clung to. I was like holding onto her skirt. <laughs> Yeah, but, but she, was the bad, she was the bad lady. I wasn't oh, allowed to talk I to her. her endlessly. Every time that they were like, well, you know, she was a prostitute. I was like, I will punch you in the balls, sir. I swear to you. <laughs> like, don't oh, call her that. <laughs> she is a survivor. <laughs> I, used oh. her. I would pick her for everything. And they're like, you know, there's other women. And I was like, don't come between me and the Magdalene. <laughs> but yeah, she was mine. She was my safe place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's when I first kind of started really branching out into more of the woo was when I realized that there actually is a divine feminine energy. It's not just God and Jesus, right. that there's other energies out there that we can't possibly fathom or understand. So we have to quote unquote, create these other deities mm -hmm. to put, to make our brains conceptualize what God is because God is 
all of, you know, all of those things. Right. And, you know, it was interesting because it's like, so after, after the suicide attempt, I, you know, I ended up moving, um, I moved out of my mom's house and moved in with my dad. And it, it's interesting because my mom is a Sagittarius son. My dad is a cancer son. So you can't get any more different than that. Yeah. And my, so my dad is a lot more, he's a more emotional being. Yeah. And so what I learned from that time there was how to process emotions and to express emotions. And I certainly wasn't an expert by the time that, you know, I left their house or anything like that, but they took the stigma off of expressing emotions, which, you know, my mom is a single mom felt like she always had to be strong. She wasn't allowed to, you know, so I grew up with that of always having to be strong and not expressing emotions Dang. and emotion you know, bad in my house. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's just so much to my, there's just so much to my story. I was not intending this to be all about oh, no, me, but I feel it like it's so important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Girl, um, I hear you. I mean, tell me whatever you're comfortable. I mean, it's such a, it's such an interesting conversation. And I mean, I, obviously I haven't listened to a podcast that you've made yet. So I don't know all of this about your life. So you're telling me a lot of things that are so synchronistic of my own. And that's completely new to me. And I had no idea that you'd been through so much and, um, oh my God, gigantic hug. And I'm sorry that you went through all that, but the fact that you went through all that makes you an expert in really in compassion and empathy and connecting with others that feel lost and floundering because we've felt like that and we still feel like that at times, but we're okay with it. We've mastered that that's part of the ebb and flow of this life and of success and of entrepreneurship or of the woo of your faith of walking and in your divine path. So for people to be able to come to you when they're getting a, a cause not everyone's going to feel like they have a purpose, but I, I I'm telling you, most people like thinking that they have a purpose, that they have some sort of covert mission that they came here to be a part of or create or unsolve or unlock or not unsolve, but solve and unlock. Um, and then, so to get that constant hit all your life that you're meant to do something, you're meant to do something, you're meant to do something. And then to find someone like you, who's literally broadcasting, I can help you figure out your purpose. That's such a fun, you know, welcome sign to come out and talk to you about that and say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling lost. And then we can also use this woo stuff that I'm hearing about. And then let's dive into a little bit of the Akashic Records and we can bounce back more into your own narrative as well. But what are the Akashic Records? I know what they are. <laughs> they are literally the records of everything your soul has ever thought, said, done. Yeah over the course of all of its lifetimes. It's, um, I've heard it referred to as the soul's blueprint. Yeah. Um, I per, like, I personally have never fully liked that analogy because we're constantly in a state of evolving and the it's blueprint, indicates blueprint is what I've seen. Yeah. I've right. seen it's a okay. fluctuating. It's like a living blueprint. Like if you can imagine the maps in Harry Potter where they're alive, Yes. That's basically how I see them or how Jesus shows me that they're always fluid and fluctuating based on. Yes, there you go. Exact reference. There you go. Perfect. That's exactly the reference they were showing me. And they're like, she'll get it. <laughs> but I'm wearing a Hufflepuff shirt of it, to this like, interview. What do you think? I know. It's so fun. The, the Akashic Records in their collective, they're basically like the 5D internet of records. They're mm, everyone's records. It's it's the World Wide Web of everyone's blueprints, past, present, future, all other sorts dimensional of versions of you. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's like a it's like the Woo Web, <laughs> the Woo Wide Web. <laughs> New search engine idea. <laughs> you can find all the weird we stuff on the girl. internet in one place. <laughs> there let's make it i have a feeling it already exists and we're just got the download to finish it but yeah so what do you do when you account when you're accessing the, the akashic records because i know people are like you shouldn't be doing that or what does that mean or you're talking to demons or you know, people say the scariest things instead of just what is that explain to me 
Yeah. So, I mean, in a session, I, you know, I use a pathway prayer to open up the channel, which I mean, everybody has this channel. It exists in your brain. We're accessing a different level of consciousness in the same way that we access a different level of consciousness when we're dreaming or, you know, a different part of our brain that houses, you know, music and math, you know, we are just literally as like accessing a different part of your brain that typically doesn't get accessed very often. Right. So if you have a brain, you have, you all have, have this channel. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast and you're understanding the words that are coming out of our mouths, you're way, you have ahead. this channel, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you have that channel, you have that part of the brain. Every single person has it. And it's the same as like saying, if you have a laptop and internet access, you have access to the web. So try, I mean, Jesus really talks to me a lot in computer terms, like Imagine we're computers and that there's software and downloads and upgrades and information and firewalls and blah, 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 blah. So if we can understand that our computers can access multiple things and we are like organic computers, then we can access multiple parts of the dial and get all sorts of information as well. And it's just yeah, tuning into that frequency and energy once you've recognized it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, what better place to go than to to find purpose mm -hmm. than there than the place right. that knows your actual soul's makeup right which, you know you can have 55 bajillion sessions a year and still not have all of that information because there's only so right. much that we as humans can conceive of right. and what a lot of people come to me for is like yes the purpose but they usually ask the question in a way that's I am so unhappy with my job right now. What am I supposed to be doing with my life? And that's how they frame it. They're wanting me to tell them, oh, you're supposed to teach third grade in an inner city school district and blah, blah, blah. When the bottom line is, you know, I have known my purpose really for about five or six years. I just was not able to speak it until about three years ago. And literally yeah. my job is to propel people into their joyful lives and help them to rediscover their magic. Yeah. Cause That's when it. you're in your purpose, you're in joy. And then I was like, when I got that really different I vibration off because I said, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So, but when I got that download, I got really pissed off because I was like, there's a number of different ways that I could do that. So at the time I was a teaching eighth grade and it felt really in alignment for the longest time because I was bringing joy to my students. Yeah. My students loved my class and they loved me. And the fact that I tried to make U.S. history as fun as I possibly could, but <laughs> God you know, bless there's, you. <laughs> there's only so much, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> there's only so much you can do. You know, You're not so allowed to I go off script either. So. In that way. <laughs> I did go off strip for like one day to talk about the Salem witch trials because it was the one thing in U.S. history that I actually enjoyed talking about. Right. Like everything else was like, yeah, yeah, war, war, weapons, blah, blah, blah. But no, let's I got hear to about talk the lady one witches. day about Salem witch trials. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And I showed the first half of Hocus Pocus as well. Just, you know. <laughs> I love it. I know I have a past life with that. I, I have found it wasn't so much Salem because I was really attracted to the Salem stuff, but I wasn't feeling as so much a connection with it as much as I still hate most of the original American politics and colonial and all that stuff. Uh, I feel like my, my witch trials were more directly in Scotland or Ireland <laughs> a little before. Mm. Yeah, that makes yeah, there's sense. a lot of us who have a lot of calling to that because we've had past lives where we had these same gifts and we were doing this exact same work and it was a big no-no back then. <laughs> so luckily we're in a time where we can do it now. The, you know, the church can't kill it's us safe. Uh, anymore. We're getting TV shows instead. So uh, I, know I keep waiting for people to be like, she's crazy and schizophrenic. And I was like, oh, okay. Or Teresa Caputo is too then. Or, you know, any of these mediums that have their own TV channels, haul them off to jail if you're taking me because we're doing the same thing. So it's the safest time right now to come out okay. of the woo closet and really go for it. Uh, I mean, my only warning and the reason I, I, Feel like Frank has been with me and Jesus since I was a child is it's it's important to integrate him into all of it 
because he does serve a reason. He does serve a huge purpose. And if you really get into mysticism and occult and um, not organized religion, Gnosticism and real knowledge, then you understand a lot more of what Jesus is, what he was trying to do, what he did and what he is still doing and what he, I mean, he accrued his own karmic debts uh, that he's responsible for because of what sprouted from his first coming. I mean, that's what he's been explaining to me is he required a second coming because he knew what would all manifest from the first get around. And oh my God, I mean, I could, I could talk about this forever. You, you, you saw the one podcast, um, cause I remember you, you wrote up the notes about um, Genesis 22, when the two angels of the Lord came and Gabriel showed me, I mean, Gabriel showed up with M Michael. I'd never met Gabriel before, he's very quick. And Jesus and, and Michael, I mean, they're always together. It's like the two of them, they're always conducting business and, and working together. They're always almost together that I've ever seen them. And all of a sudden I saw Gabriel and he was super quick and he wanted to tell me all about Genesis 22. And he's like, pay attention. I'm gonna tell you something. I need you to focus and really see this vision and understand it because it was so important. Because one of my questions was, what is with this God? I mean, the fallout that I had with God was, dude, what is your deal? You're a sociopath if you sent your son here to then be murdered. Like, I'm not getting the plot twist here. I don't follow. So <laughs> that's why Gabriel was like, listen, it's really important that you understand this and then tell others as well what happened in Genesis 22. And if you can find older readings, actual lexicons and Bibles, it, it says an angel of the Lord. And that's the one who tricked Abraham out of bed super early and said, you got to go murder your kid today. Let's go. And he was like, oh, whatever you say, God. And then Gabriel shows up right before he's about to kill his kid. And, sa and it, it says in the text, a second angel of the Lord, not the same angel a second time. It's literally like Gabriel showed up and was like, damn it, Lucy, Lucifer, the, the beautiful, most beautiful face of the angels had oh. tricked him. And then... So then Gabriel's like, and then I gave him a sheep to to crucify, even though or not or not crucify to do a burn offering with a little lamb. Not that they encourage it. He's like, but that's their principles and their practices. So I gave him that, and then he made an announcement to everyone saying that God was going to bring his own son and have that be a sacrifice. God was going to have his own sacrifice, and he was like, oh my God, I literally never said that. So, but then it got written into the Bible, and then Jesus had to fulfill that. So, I mean, imagine being Jesus and getting here and you're like born and you're hiding and your parents are like, hey, the king's trying to kill you. And he just murdered all the first king, all the first born boys to make a point and try to get rid of you. And then Jesus has got to grow up and be like, why does my heavenly father want me dead? I don't get this. So it's important to understand that <laughs> Earth is crazy. Uh, we have misinterpreted a lot of things. And we need to use a little more logic and a lot more woo <laughs> in deciphering and, and really transcending and getting a grip and getting uh, really understanding what's going on here. Because I know with the, with, the, with the mysticism and the occult stuff and the spiritual awakening, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of it that's devoid of Christ energy because they're mad at the churches. And I get it. I get it. I got it in second grade when I started reading Book of Revelation and I noticed Jesus was yelling at all the churches, which I found fascinating. <laughs> like, why is he yelling at all the churches if you're all doing it right? So that answered a lot of questions to me right there is I really could not take what the church was saying as true and correct or really even healthy. Uh, it made me expand my mind and seek a lot more questions and answers. And my mom was super into spirituality too, was reading a lot of books. So I, I appreciate being able to expand my mind, even talking about aliens. Like I appreciate where that woman's brain went um, so that I could, you know, be the, the person I needed to be as an adult to be able to withstand all of this. Uh, Cause I know people mock it. They don't understand it. Um, it's gotten so much better now though. I think people are really, really, really having a massive awakening. Whereas a couple of years ago, I, I feel like it was still pretty sketch. <laughs> Not that we've had the antichrist come and go. Uh, I think people are seeing it a little more clearer. Uh, but I have noticed, have you noticed as well, there seems to be a much bigger, more positive shift in the past, maybe even year. I have definitely felt that. I've definitely felt that. I see a lot more openness to the I see a lot more openness to the woo. Um, and it's all, I feel like embracing that is such a huge part of the awakening. 
on the planet and, and, and not even just the woo like spirituality independent of dogma is really what yeah. it is and I mean and when I think of the woo that's what I think of I think of spirituality minus dogma yeah. because I mean there's still even dogma in the spiritual non-church community yeah. as well but there's a yeah. lot of that so yeah, there's a um, lot of bypassing there's a lot of bypassing there's a lot of martyrdom that doesn't need to be there I mean I had to you stop with that martyrdom stuff too you know I think a lot of us that grew up especially Catholic we felt like we had to be a martyr at some point oh yeah definitely 100 percent. and so my, par my parents my parents yourself that maybe I'm not going to be murdered and taken out maybe I'm going to actually die old <laughs> now what do I do with all that time right <laughs> and that's where you come in exactly yeah, exactly. Um, so I think I was saying, um, uh, yeah, so I got the download for my purpose while in the Akashic Records, like doing my own work and doing my own personal work in there. Um, and originally I was pissed off because I was like, that doesn't actually tell me anything. That doesn't tell me you're supposed to be teaching eighth grade at such and such middle school and blah, Here's blah, the blah. Address. Like, that doesn't actually tell me anything. <laughs> Here's the address. This is where you go. You're going to go for your interview on such and such day, right? Like, I was like, that doesn't tell me anything. And then I literally, and then it seemed like it happened almost instantaneously where I flipped and I said, oh, I can do this in a multiple, a bunch of ways. I could be that theater person again. I could be that dancer. I could be that gymnast. I could be that trumpet player and yeah. bring joy to the people. Yeah, yeah. And maybe inspire them to be in pursuing their art, which happens to be their unique magic that needed to be awakened in them. And that's really what I do is I help people awaken in them. What is their uniqueness? What is their thing about them that makes them special? Because yeah. everybody's special. They're just not all special in the same way. And I think people think if they're special, then they have to be special above somebody else. And that's not it. You're right. special because the person next to you is special and they're different. Right. And the person right. next to them is special and different. Yeah, it's not a and we all work together. Yes. Yes. To raise the planet, essentially. Well, if everything is God and I am you and you are me, then it's not a competition if we're going to be successful. If I'm going to be successful, I can't be competing with people who are exact like me, we need to be unifying, working together, which I'm finally seeing more and more of. I'm seeing a lot more unity and collaboration, whereas I don't know that a lot of mystics hung out um, several years ago. I think they were very put off by one another because I remember when I was getting information for the Twin Flame expansions, I was getting in like 2017, 2016, this, um, the, the diamond twin flame codes, the diamond twin flame um, concepts. And I remember approaching someone who was teaching twin flame stuff and she was like, none of that is real. None of that exists. And uh, she was basically saying I was like reckless and stuff like this. And I was like, wow. Uh, and what's your success rate in here of, of helping people? Because so far I'm not seeing anyone get actual help. Uh, so the fact that you think you know all is concerning because it's always expanding and growing. Um, but I see so much more collaboration now, which I think is such a beautiful thing of all these people coming together and um, and, and really working together and, and God, just making the most incredible leaps and bounds uh, for the spiritual in, in embodiment for the collective and, uh, and, and breaking down a lot of these walls between us. Yeah, um, I keep seeing that we have entered the age of Aquarius, but I seem to like, are we actually there? I don't know enough about astrology. So that's a week. We're in it, me. but we're, it's just beginning. Okay. All right. Because I was like, I'm pretty time, sure so a lot of people are firing 60s. off new ideas. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, like I've been waiting for the age of Aquarius. Well, I'm Aquarius. <laughs> okay. well, I'm Aquarius yeah, this so is I've been age. waiting for this. Totally, totally. Ugh. And Archangel Michael gave me a lot of ideas early on because he was like, let's see if she's paying attention. And I was like, yeah, I can hear you. I wrote down all these recipes for my chakra cafe, my chakra drinks. But I, I mean, I was developing the chakra stuff in 2015. And then I remember I was asking, I was like, what's the next step? And I kept seeing Michael on the, he, he would show me a stove and he was stirring something on a back burner. And I was like, okay, so it's just, it's on a back burner for now. And now we've had this apocalypse 
which is a retail apocalypse, restaurant apocalypse, blah, 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 blah. All of this is going to start going away. So now there's going to all of a sudden be a new opportunity for me to bring forward things that I was working on years ago that I had no idea what we were going to be doing with them, when they were ever going to be coming out. I thought it was going to come out immediately at that time. But no, we needed to have this phase of old washing away so that new can come out and actually be appreciated. So I think it's been like this buildup and then this age of Aquarius is going to, I mean, we're, we're going to see really incredible things. I mean, we already are, but just really new concepts and new, and this is when we're going to see a lot of the really cool crystal children coming forward and uh, helping make the new template uh, that's more sustainable for, you know, the collective thinking more so. collectively thinking more collectively. So it makes sense that there's a lot more collaborations and that it's not, it hasn't happened until now. Then. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that does make sense to me. I always kind of wondered like, are we actually in the age of Aquarius? Are we not? Is it, is it, it going to be like started this year? Oh no, this... the age of Aquarius started like last month. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but we were kind of moving in that direction, Yeah. but I yeah, did sort of, what if we got it? What if we got it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Because you know there was the song. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, and it's still I've heard it still about <laughs> eighty years. You know, it's still right. Did I do the math right? About eighty years, something right? like that. Yeah. Okay. To get to the actual one. So yeah, okay. or I think it was yeah. It was well, depending on when you were thinking about it. But yeah, it and, and then I think we're in this age of Aquarius for a good uh, a couple of years. I have to look again. I think it's like is it, it's a couple of years or longer than that. Which sounds good to me because uh, from other age of Aquarius that we've been in, I think the Renaissance, all the Renaissance stuff was through the age, the last age of Aquarius. And that was a ton oh, of yeah, inventions, yeah. a ton of art, Inven artists, mm -hmm. inventions. So that's what we're expecting this time around too. Can we skip Aquarius. Aries? <laughs> <laughs> You're so I'm funny. An, I'm an Aries, so I'm like, uh, oh, can we skip it, please? <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> You know, but you, you, you speak on something that I think a lot of people struggle with, and that's thinking you have to do one thing and one thing yes. only and one thing well. And that was one of the reasons I really had a hard time coming out of the spiritual closet with much focus, because I felt like everything that they were asking me to do, I was like, I don't know if I want to get stuck doing this one thing forever. And then it was like, no, you can do all of the things. You can do any of the things. You can do none of the things. You can do the thing on the day you feel like doing the thing. You can do other things on other days. And then it was much more liberating because at first it was like, first I saw that I was writing some book and then I was like, oh, I don't want to just write a book. And you know, Jesus is like, you are killing me. <laughs> like, we're going to have you do a bunch of things. And then I started seeing the musical theater stuff happen. And then I'm happier doing a whole lot of things. I really get bored. I, especially when I get in, involved in things. I don't know. So I, I love that you're saying that thing because so many people are just, you have to niche on the one thing. You have to commit to the one thing. You have to be the one thing. And I think so many people are resistant to committing to something that they're going to resent and hate. And they like the options. You know, we're, we're uh, spoiled to death with our options. So to sit there and say, I'm going to do one thing can scare the shit out of someone. Right. And so, you know, right now it's kind of like, you know, I spend the bulk of my time writing, you know, and, and, and I love doing stuff like what I do for you, where I'm repurposing your content or Thank I'm God getting, for you. Thank because, God for you. because for someone like you, it's like, I know that I need to get this message out there in more ways than just my audio voice speaking. Yeah. yeah. And I have and I can be things that I'm doing. And so I can help. Yeah. people like you yeah. to be in your purpose, doing all of your things by taking that thing off of your plate. Yeah, you did. You have no idea how much it helped me uh, to commit to that and joyfully pay you every single month, knowing that God was going to make sure that that money was available to me so that I could make it available to you because this thing needs to happen. It needs to exist. And I mean, me repurposing my own podcast, I yell at everyone and everything, including God and myself so much that I'm like, I need someone to have a gentler tone, really repurpose this, or I, I, I'm just yelling at everyone. And I know that I'm full of rage and I have a lot of anger and I get it. And I am, I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that I am not aware, uh, but I, I truly needed you to have that softer joy goddess brought into my work so that I could pull in more audiences that I'm missing that you can clearly see, listen, if you do it like this and just bring a little more of the softness and, and bring it in like that, you're still able to almost be me on paper, but it's 
a much gentler version of me that I'm really just not able to be a lot of the time right now. Uh, it was an older version of me that I felt like really got taken advantage of and hurt. So I am not able to really wear that skin and got, get a lot of work done. So I really, really appreciate that with your empathy levels and compassion levels and that we've mirrored so much of our work together that you are able to help me and take that off my plate, something that really upset me and, and it kept my podcast from keep going, honestly, because I needed you to be the train behind me, quite honestly, also to keep going and uh, and keep making more product and, and and stuff for you to keep doing. So you're holding me accountable to even keep working with God because I mean, there's a lot of times I will create something and be like, fuck it all, let's burn it to, gr <laughs> burn it to the ground. And there's certain things that it's like, no, Molly, we need you to keep doing this. We need you to keep doing your podcast, even though I've made it as easy as possible. I wear my hair curly and I put fake eyelashes on and I have a filter. So it's like, I've made it the easiest way possible to show up. I wear a robe, like I couldn't make this easier. And then, and they throw that in my face whenever I'm like, I can't do it. They're like, literally three things you need to do. <laughs> Just, come on, let's Plug do in it. your microphone, turn on your camera and speak. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I've gotten a good feedback from it. I mean, aside from the human traffickers and ex Epstein and Maxwell employees that love to harass me, whatever, have fun, have at it. Uh, if they could stop talking for a minute and actually listen, they might learn something. But instead they just poo poo all over us. Um, right. But it is what it is, you, you know, you stand up in your purpose and you make the things that are in your Akashic records to make. And sometimes you're like, wow, I had no idea that this was one of the things I would be making. And um, I love that that's the work that you offer. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing that you do and that you help and that, and, and that you have the ability to do that. And then you also teach how to do it too. And that's the same, as, same thing I do. None of this is hidden that only Molly can do this. It's, Molly knows how to do it. And if you watch a couple podcasts, you can probably figure out how she does it because she tells you how to do it. But a lot of people don't take the time to learn how to do something or feel comfortable doing something that is perceived as so dangerous and out there. And, you know, there's so much fear all around empowering ourselves through divine wisdom and divine knowledge. And here you're like, no, 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 I got this because we're conditioned not to trust ourselves. We're conditioned yeah. to use only our logical mind. And with that means- right. Our logical so, mind with misinformation. <laughs> yes, our logical mind with misinformation. And it's like, when we're only using that part of our brain, it's like, we don't trust the other side, you know, where yeah. the spiritual gifts are housed. Right. On the side of our brain that houses imagination. Yes. And so we don't trust is this my imagination or is this a spiritual gift waking up or? And they feel the same because they basically are the same. I mean, Jesus says the kingdom is within. And oh my God, one of the things Jesus told me was um, one of the reasons that Judas got all out of sorts was he started telling like his real inner circle of apostles. And this is the book of Mary Magdalene and the book of Judas was basically saying that your imagination is the kingdom. And that really upset him to think that it was a that simple and b you're going to tell people that and all of a sudden the romans are going to be like oh yeah it is and the jews are going to be like oh yeah it is let's offer him a seat at the table now like judas was like i can't with this you think you're god and now the god is in our imagination like oh my god you are reckless but it's true but it's true if you can have the imagination of a child you are literally experiencing the world's blended because my imaginary friends were just ghosts, but I thought they were my imagination, but then they would respond. They would interact. They would talk, they would guide. They. So is it my imagination or is our imagination way more than we realize what it is? And you're, you know, you're just a person who is fine tuned and really understands all of that so much so that you can be a leader in it. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to one of your points earlier about, you know, the fear of commitment to the one thing. I think mm -hmm. it's also really important as the interconnectedness builds more strongly on our planet mm -hmm. for us to realize that every inspiration that you get to is not always about you. Yeah. Um, like you can get the inspiration for something. And this is especially true for me as a manifester because we are the channel, you know, yeah. not that other people cannot channel, but it's like, we are the channels of divine right. know, information. And so it's like, 
and that's how, why we initiate certain things. So we initiate, we get the ball rolling mm -hmm. and then we go, you know, uh, some other people can take on that work. So it's like, yeah. I got this idea for something, but it's like, I'm not meant to actually sit here and do the work. Maybe that's a Molly. Thing, right. Or maybe that's, or maybe that's a, you know, uh, another person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, and that's why I love about understanding more about the human design stuff of really understanding when you get an idea, am I supposed to execute the whole thing on my own by myself? That sounds horrible and tedious. Or am I supposed to work with a bunch of other generators and all of these other manifestors that they're working in their design that want to do the parts that I delegate out or want to do these certain things that we all collaborate and come back around and do the big thing that was so overwhelming to the person who got the idea that was never meant for them to go on that journey alone. But we don't know that we're supposed to go on these Hobbit adventures. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the greatest adventures. I know. And and it's it's just it's been a it's just an it's been an amazing journey for someone like you and someone like me who's gone through so much and I mean so many other people too. I'm not trying to skirt that. It's just you and me, Mallory. We've had the brunt of it. Everyone's the going world. through these huge shit storms. And if you can see yeah. the beauty in it and find the joy in it, I mean you're walking on water. You're literally walking on water, and that's the whole concept of being able to do the dream work is the work then feels like you're kind of walking on water. And sometimes it can feel like a, a wave came up and got you. But you just get back up and, and keep walking again and reach out to people like Mallory and say, you know, hey, uh, I need some next steps. I'm feeling a little constipated. <laughs> spiritual, spiritual constipation. <laughs> when you're blocked, you're blocked. <laughs> yeah, well, and then, you know, and the other piece of it too is that, um, that channel piece, this, that questioning of, oh, is this actually for me or is it for somebody else is um, particularly true of those of you who are watching this, who go and get your human design. And you see the little triangle at the top that's in the head. If that is white, if it is not colored in, that means you have an open head, which means that you are constantly probably getting pinged by all of these things around you. And you're not necessarily meant to be executing on that. So really right. taking that time to go in and be like, and this is not my expertise, but I just find Good it so point, fascinating. Though. And I keep no, for real. You know, I, I'm glad you went there and said that because yeah, you, that that open the one that's when it's open, you're getting everyone's information. So you might be hearing other people's chatter that you may not need to go anywhere with or develop. And you kind of need to tune that out or give that to the person and say, hey, I'm getting this for you and 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 give it out. But yeah, I find that fascinating because I have a closed crown. So everything that I get is, I think for me, and that's what that means, right? Uh, a defined head. It, it just means that you're less subjected to stuff that's not yours, essentially, gotcha. in that area. Gotcha. I'll have to look so. at it again. I think that's what mine is. I, my husband and I were the exact opposite. I think he has open crown. I have a lot of open centers, <laughs> which is why I need a lot of naps because I'm, <laughs> I'm subjected to getting pinged all of these things at all a given time. And it doesn't matter how great my boundaries are. It's just, okay, all right, I need a nap now. <laughs> I saw I saw your it's, post yesterday of all the things you did. And I was like, my God, that woman, she did so many things. You did like a hundred things and took a nap. It's, this has been a week and I actually did do, a, I did do about five days this week, bad manifester where I skipped my nap because I had all of these things that I was doing. And so anyway, never skipping my nap ever again, but emotional conditioning or programming. It's like, that's all stuff that can be cleared. And so I actually, in my Akashic records work, I do emotional clearing work. I don't, um, I was taught how to do cord cuttings. I feel like in the Akashic records in a very traditional way. Um, and then what I found is that that doesn't actually, that can clear, you know, karmically, that can clear on the esoteric area, but it doesn't actually clear from our physical vessels that are holding on to that programming in this iteration and in this body. So the spiral, um, there's the spiral modality and then there's the spiral program. So I'm talking about the spiral modality um, uses muscle testing to test into any emotions that might be trapped in specific organs in your body. Right. And so then, you know, as things come up in the records that 
potentially need to be cleared, even if they're past life things, there's things that are, that are being held into our physical vessels right, right. now. Totally. Um, I had so, to clear some past life stuff. I've had to clear what feels like multiple lifetimes in this own lifetime. I mean, there's so much gunk in there. There's so much, cause we've been ignorant to it all. Mm -hmm. It's like, we've never brushed our teeth and then suddenly we're like, oh, I'm gonna brush this once and crystal clear. No, we have to really go in there and learn how to brush so our gross. teeth because we've never brushed our damn teeth before. Like Western people, we've not grown up with chakras and spirals and gunk in our auras. Like that's all, you're Looney Tunes and I'm calling the police. So this is new. So there's layers and layers to peel back and clean up and clean out. And uh, Mallory's the gal to do it. Yeah. So, and what that modality does is, you know, you, you're, it's using acupressure yeah. technology. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know why I put it in quotes. It is kind of, it is technology. It totally um, is. Yeah. You science. know, to um, science. That's what it, what I was, that's why I said technology. Yeah. 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 So, cause you rub the pressure points on your body that are right. linked to that organ. Those to, meridians. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Really to totally. release it. And yeah. so it's um so i do that combo work in the records and um it's okay to talk about an offer right now sure go right ahead please if you have one okay so since the beginning of my akashic Don't experimentation away, <laughs> i know <No> um, freebies. <laughs> i tended to get deities showing up all over the place cool um, especially as i was exploring different religions after oh gosh the super after high the incident right yeah. <laughs> so i um you know one of the first people one of the worst goddesses first goddesses to show up was Kuan Yin. you know the self-love on on my journey to self-love and i have since really reconnected to her i realized it after my messaging had really done this huge flip recently that has been all about self-love and it took me oh, a really long time right. as i was like i'm super intelligent but that was not a, a very intelligent <laughs> it took me a really long right time to, right she was literally right here and i was like <laughs> looking <laughs> off to the side <laughs> um you know it took me a really long time to realize oh my gosh she's coming through she's made her way back around and i had also been connecting with hecate you know i connected with her specifically on Samhain this year um lilith same thing it was kind of honoring both of them on Samhain, which is super powerful and yeah. Thoth is literally just with me all the time he's just always around he's has been so influential in my relationship in healing my relationship with the sacred masculine because I, can imagine. I was not okay with it for a really long time same um, i mean i literally needed to hear an apology and explanation from jesus himself and he has delivered <laughs> so i get it i get thank it thank you jesus right um but what i have started offering relatively recently has been deity sessions with those specific deities because those are the ones that i'm connected to i'm not you know, look, just creating sessions willy nilly because, oh, so and so's about this and so and so's about that. And I'm just going to, you know, make money off of them. No, right. I've had, I know something about this. No, right. You've had, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End up conversations. I asked their permission. I asked, okay, if we were, if I was to do something to honor you, that was a one on one session with somebody, what would that be? And what would that look like? And so these deity power sessions are Akashic records and emotional clearing where we clear things that are thematically linked to each deity. So oh, Kuan one. Yin, uh, okay, get on my schedule. Kuan Yin is um, self-love, compassion, and perseverance. Because I think people forget that, you know, she's not she's not just love and light and uh, she's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> she's a badass. Um, you know, Hecate is um, magnetism, power, and magic. Lilith is sexuality, healing, and freedom. And then Thoth is soul wisdom, balance, and discipline. So yeah, so all of those sessions are 222. You get a special, I create a special altar that's uniquely for you based on what they're telling me to do. I literally was like, oh, there are Akashic Records and clearing sessions. That's how I initially advertised them. And then on the day of my first one, oh, it was Hecate. So bigger. 
yeah, it was Hecate who, who was, and she was like, no, 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 you're building me an altar. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I, I guess I'm building you an altar. <laughs> you're doing it right. You're doing it right. <laughs> and so, um, and so that's what ended up happening. So, um, and then what has been happening in these sessions is that I've been guided to whatever notes that I've taken for that particular mm -hmm. session, um, they get burned on the next full moon to officially okay. get released out into the world. So it's like you get altar set up, specific cards that are directed to you. You get an Akashic Records clearing session with me. And then I, you know, do a little ceremonial burning at, you know, whenever the full moon is for you as Very well. Very cool. We'll put links into that of how totally. to contact you, how to get in touch with you, how to schedule uh, and see what other offerings you have as well, because you are just amazing with all the things that you offer and all the things that you come up with because so many people need so many different things. So, you know, I, I know I get a, a bunch of different hits as well of designing certain things certain ways so that people can understand and reach certain, you know, ever, different audiences. People hear things differently. People understand and comprehend because we all need the same thing at the end of the day. We all need self-love, right? We all need more confidence and self-love and, and a lot of the things. But the way it's presented, people, they won't think that's for them. So I love that you keep coming up with these new beautiful ways to get people to really invest in themselves and work on themselves and heal themselves and i mean the best investment ever is investment in yourself i did a clearing yeah. with, with with beth uh, her wrecking ball self-sabotage clearing <laughs> and uh wow that worked really 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 powerfully and that was just a, a baby step into this this world of um you know spiral work and clearing and emotional clearing and, and stuff like that it's powerful it is powerful and so much fun. Mallory, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me today. This was really, thank you really for fun. having me. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure. Is there anything else we need to talk about before we were, we're good? Like I said, I think we can, I think my, my microphones just died. Hold on a second. There we go. I, I think my AirPods died. Can you hear me again? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I can hear you now too. So, um, but I, I, I definitely want to schedule another appointment with you and um, talk about how anything else you're open to talking about. I, I, I have a lot. lot. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I love. I realized until I started talking, I was like, oh, I actually have a lot to say. So let's schedule part two. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let's do another one. I'm glad I got to uh, pop your proverbial podcasting cherry. You're the first podcast. Oh, no, you've done podcasts before, right? Not your podcast, but yes, I've done podcasts. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. But then I have not taken anything. I, I... <laughs> my let's be frank. Oh, let's be frank. Yes. My let's be frank, Terry. <laughs> there you go. I can't wait to have you back. Thank you so much for coming on today. And um, we will have links below on how you can get in touch with Valerie. And reach uh, out to me. If you'd like to work closer with me, you can opt in through the show notes to an email sequence where I teach you the basics of all things manifesting. 